We welcome you back to Civic Stadium. The scoreboard has gone dead during the quarter. Not only the time clock, but everything else. The gentlemen in the booth next to us are scrambling around feverishly trying to find the proper fuses. Well, they can now, now the CD player stuck over the PA system. We got that fixed. And they've got it starting to light back up. The only guys who are running around harder right now are the defensive coordinators for the two teams trying to figure out a way to stop the ball. Well, evidently the, the theory about bringing a lot of heat hasn't worked too well because both teams are scoring and both defenses are trying to employ that tactic. Yeah, the only heat's been red hot offense so far. We'll get you some first quarter numbers in a minute. Jay Kabowski, the fullback in motion. Blanchard underneath, nice grab there. As that was a tall one for Angel, he pulled it down, covered by Ryland Jollymore. Cheo Angel with that grab. Jollymore, nice coverage, and more than anything, the way he closes on the receiver after the ball is in the air, very impressive here. Let's see if you can see it. See the catch, and then Jollymore just closes all over the top of him and brings him down. Prevents the Vikings from getting a first down. And it looks as though Portland State's going to go for it, and why not? They're almost in field goal range, but maybe just a little bit out, out of it. It'd be a 50-yarder for France. His long so far this season is 43. He doesn't have a real long leg. They're going to go for it. Underneath, caught. Nice fingertip grab by Bryant, and he's inside the 30. He got enough for the first down that time. Well, we've seen some excellent catches this evening, and that was probably the most impressive of all. Uh, again, back behind him, stretches out and somehow hangs on to this. What an excellent shot by our video crew, and what an excellent catch. Vince Hunsberger on the coverage, but a four, first down for Portland State at the Montana 28-yard line. Blanchard again with some time, now flushed out. Flag thrown on the play, could come back. The pass complete inside the 15. Charles over on the far sideline making that juggling catch, but it's going to come back, and the Grizzly linemen are clapping their hands. Probably a hold on that. Damon Parker on the coverage that time, and that is the call, so PSU will be backed up a bit. Nice pump fake, though. Tries to see if somebody's going to come free, but good coverage. Buying some time, just kind of rolling across the field. Offense. And almost has a first down. Ten yards from the previous spot. Tim Walsh saying what happened there. They're trying to find out. There's France, the kicker, in the background trying to warm up. I think Tim would be fun to have a mic on during the game and listen to it afterwards. He's pretty animated over there. He's an interesting guy. I'll tell you what else. He's a coach that you can usually find over across the street after the ball game as well. He spends a lot of time visiting with the fans and really a guy that's easy to get in contact with. Real nice guy. Wilson with the initial stick right there on Dunn. What an excellent tackle. That's exactly how you draw it up or walk through it in practice. You want to show your players how to tackle, watch this one. Excellent form, kind of comes in and seals the deal, uses his shoulders and chest, big hit. Really can't draw it up any better as a tackler than that shot. Good inside pressure as well, blocking off that hole for Dunn. So call it a gain really of about a yard that time, they'll spot it at the 36. Little throw back underneath. There's not a receiver there as Angel went down the sideline. You could, you could kind of almost call that one an, a little of a, a grounding or an ineligible, but Angel just ran the wrong route. Yeah, it was an intended slip screen to the outside. Again, I like the action that uh, the Vikings employ. Little motion, little turn to the outside, almost a sprint out, and then bring it back across the body. But as you mentioned, there's nobody there but a lineman who's supposed to lead him down the field. John Andreas is the, the escorts here. Where's the guy who's supposed to grab the ball? Nice looking play though. Excellent call. And it brings up a third and long now for Portland State as they need to get it to the Montana 18 yard line to keep this drive. Grizzlies coming. Now they're backing up a little bit. Showed a lot of heat earlier. They'll throw underneath for Dunn. He's got a couple lead blockers, but he will be wrapped up short. 
knocked down by Miller at about the 22-yard line, but a good run again after the catch by Chip Dunn. It'll be a fourth and short. Well, what I liked about that call is they came right back with another screen to the same side. It's unusual that an offense would do that, and a nice block there to spring him. Well, they're bringing the kicking unit out. We have a, a little bit of a change, and for the first time tonight, apparently, we're not going to have a touchdown on the board. Dan France is set. This one officially would be from 39 yards, but we have a whistle before the snap. And a timeout has been called by Montana. Interesting call there that you'd take it. It's the last timeout that the Grizz have in the half, and we will step aside. 12.35 to play in the second quarter. All even at Civic Stadium. Dan France set to attempt this field goal from 39 yards. He's 5 of 6 this year. His only miss came from inside 30. As we said a moment ago, his season long is 43. From the left, hash. And he's missed it to the right. Montana holds, and for the first time, somebody comes up empty. That is the first time. You know, watching him in the pregame, he was having an excellent evening kicking, of course, with no pressure. This one he just kind of pushed a little bit, I think. The ball sails on him just a little. And it just barely misses. Just outside the sticks, Montana will take over at the 22-yard line. And I know somewhere there's a defensive coordinator counting that one as a hold. <laughs> Craig Paulson must uh, be breathing a little bit of sigh of relief because, as you mentioned, the first time no points were scored by the offensive unit of the Vikings. Grizzlies have been perfect to this point as well. Ferris in motion. Miller again with some time wrapped up around the ankles, but he completes it to Ferris. A couple of nice downfield blocks for him by his wide receiver compatriots, and he'll take it over the 35-yard line before he's chased out by Floyd. Well, Ferris showed some experience that time. Drew in the pocket, but Ferris comes across the middle from his outside receiver position and just kind of sit, sets up camp, sets in the middle, and waits for the pass. That's a good receiver. Let your quarterback see, and then watch this. Make a few folks miss and pick up extra, probably 10, 15 yards extra. Smart blocks as well. They didn't come back and crack back, and they just made simple brush blocks and allowed him to run off it. It's a first down at the 37. 15 on that catch for Ferris. He's averaging almost 20 a grab this year. Humphrey, he picks his way through. Flag thrown late, could come back for a hold. Johansi breaking it into Portland State territory all the way down to the 41, but I think they're going to bring this one back, Bob. Well, Drew Miller able to fool our cameraman on that, on that particular play with his play fake. Again, that's a great uh, quarterback that can do that. It is going to be holding. This is coming back. Here's a little different look where the camera does pick it up. Nice play fake by Drew. You can see him uh, act as if he has the ball again, but holding it is coming back. You know, he reminds me a lot of a young man I watched run first at Washington State and in the pros, Reuben Mays, a young man out of Kennedy. He has that same type of build and, and motion and just cuts back very well. And as you said, only a sophomore. Yeah, it's going to be fun to uh, watch him excel and get probably get better and better as he matures. Bringing that one back just inside the 30-yard line, so... Makes it a first and officially 18 for Montana. Lots of time again. That one through the fingers of Dallas Neal would have been a rare opportunity. He's had three catches so far this year and couldn't quite reach back to grab that one. Usually pretty sure-handed receiver, but that time, as you mentioned, a little bit behind him. coverage there by Michael Duncan as you took a look at Neal. Portland State flipping around on the defensive unit again. Floyd hollering at his teammates in the secondary. He's down at the bottom of your screen at the left cornerback position. Time again for Miller on the rollout. Little sidearm throw and a nice grab by Ferris. He steps out at the 40-yard line. Duncan with a little extra pop for him there. Ferris gets a little over 10 back. 
Drew Miller is going to be tired by the end of the evening. He's having a lot of pressure. Again, has to flush. That's just a lot of concentration to be able to slide out of that pocket and make a throw on the run. Nice catch by Ferris. Nice downfield block for him as well by Hancock. And he takes it to the 40-yard line. The junior from Lewiston, Idaho. It's a real luxury that Nick Dennehy has. A lot of different receivers he can continue to rotate through. And they all are kind of special in what they do. Make people miss usually after the first tackle attempt. They need to get to the 47 to keep this drive going. Under pressure, had to throw that one. Watkins broke the route off, so a little misread between receiver and quarterback. And for the first time in the ball game, Montana will have to punt. And Drew had to pick himself up off the ground after that throw because, again, a lot of pressure inside. He just has time to get the ball away, and he was really hit. Little headhunter there, George Jordan, a reserve middle linebacker. Junior college transfer coming in. Sixth time this season only that Dallas Neal has punted the ball and he gets off a beautiful high kick. Floyd having to backpedal to go after this one. It'll bounce and stick. Montana able to down it just outside the 10 yard line. Nice high punt that time by Dallas Neal and about a 48 yard punt with the bounce back. So a beautiful looking kick and Portland State down inside the 10. Really good hang time, 48 yards really with no return. As you mentioned, the ball kind of sticks, bounce back off this artificial turf. We haven't talked much about the turf. It's uh, a bit worn and there's some pretty good seams out there. But you're being far too kind. <laughs> where the uh, baseball field's lined up. So hopefully uh, those football players won't have to turn an ankle on those seams. There's a lot of talk about revamping Civic Stadium in Portland and changing it around. And there are high hopes for that. This is. A long used and oft used stadium. Ball loose on the running play. Big stick as well. Boy, Casey, Dunn went down in a heap that time. Yeah, Casey Robinson there, number 96 for the Grizzlies. In on that, here you get a better look at the play. Oh boy. Merlis in on the tackle. He really, again, closed well. Mertes with a big hit that time and it. I heard a roar go up. I thought he'd separated it from the ball as well. We saw everybody scrambling at a big stick there. Blanchard looking underneath and completes through the seam again to Dunn. Into Montana territory. Trey Young on the stop. Dunn almost had too many decisions to make running down the field, whether to follow his blockers or to try to break it off after the after the catch. A lot of green here. Again, Montana brings the middle backers. That opens up the inside. And then Wilson, of course, trying to catch him. That's a mismatch. And then he tries to break it up inside. Big gain for the Vikings. Valuable coming out of the backfield as well. That's his 11th catch of the year. Good for 44 yards and a first down at the Grizz 45. Trying to slip screen for Charles again. Wilson sliding out nicely on the coverage to run him out of bounds short of the first down. But again, a good pickup for the Vikings of seven. Almost to hold that time downfield, but again, the uh, offensive lineman did a nice job for the Vikings to let up and not commit the foul. So that play doesn't have to be a negative yardage. Watch it here on the replay. You can see number 67 leading out front. Right here, he could have got a hold, but he let go. And Wilson pushes him out of bounds. From the 38. Both teams coming up empty so far here in the second quarter. Dunn avoids Murtis narrowly that time and gets a couple of yards. But Corey was uh, snorting and... Pawn at him that time, couldn't quite track him down. I mentioned uh, Casey Robinson early, number 96 for Montana. He, uh, a Missoula player, played at Sentinel High School, and his brother, Corey, plays for the Bobcats. Casey actually was fortunate enough to, to coach him in junior high. Uh, really a physical specimen as you see him here. Really a nice individual, great, great person to coach. And he's had a great football career at Montana and in Missoula. Third and about a yard and a half here for the Vikings. Dunn cracks back, gets the first down. Down to about the 33-yard line that time. They didn't bring the lead fullback in for him. Line doing a large part of the work. 
Adam Boomer in on the stop. We haven't called his name much so far tonight. Yeah, and another good player inside. Again, Montana, nice blocking. Again, we talked a little bit about Hoover's coaching ability, his offensive line coach. I'm impressed with the offensive line play for the Vikings. Look at a couple of them there. Scott Casebeer on the left. John Andreas, who's supposedly on the injured list, but is in action, and that's a big plus for the Vikings tonight. Dunn getting that first at the 32. Motion man is the blocking tight end, Hester. They'll throw back underneath and incomplete. Angel tried to make the scoop. That was a trap, and the crowd, of course, didn't like it. I think it was a trap. It looked like it hit the ground, and he was able to scoop it up. Well, I'm not sure if we'll see it here on the replay or not, but I do he, think it was. He sold it well, though. Yes, he did. Again, nice action away. Ball just a touch underthrown. Yeah, I think it did get the turf. There we go. Oh, boy, tough to tell from that one. The first one, it looked like it. it nice seemed, work, guys. Seemed to bounce a little bit, but I like the call again. Great action, as you mentioned. Rotate across your body. That is a very hard throw to make for a quarterback. And Angel with the smart move. You run till it's <laughs> not in doubt any longer. Run till the whistle. Blanchard with some time, looking under for Charles, and that one's stripped away. Adam Boomer looked as though he had missed it, and Boomer got just enough of Charles to knock it away. Yeah, give the credit all there to Boomer, who was able to watch it here on the replay, smell out the pass. He picks up the receiver real well, and then comes back and makes a great play here to knock the ball loose. He had to slide over into that zone when the other man released, and he did a nice job of getting there in time. Junior from American Falls, Idaho. A couple of fumble recoveries so far this season. You know, the receiving core on both of these teams are excellent the way they go to the ball and catch the ball. Portland State has called for a timeout in a third down situation. That's the Vikings' second timeout. Well, our tour at pace is finally slowed. 8.58 to play in the second quarter. We're even at 21. And we welcome you back to Civic Stadium, the Portland State Vikings, 2-0 in conference play, along with the Montana Grizzlies. And we're all even on the scoreboard as well. Here's a big play for actually both teams, third down and 10. Try to run the inside handoff again. Bryant running for the corner. Wilson in pursuit. He'll tackle him down. The Grizz getting a little wise to that play that time. Exactly, and I think that might be a case of going to the well almost too many times. It's worked very well twice, but here in the same play early, again, exact same look. What Montana does well here is they pursue down the line, stretch the play out rather than trying to catch him in the backfield. That uh, he doesn't get, only gets about three yards that way. Spotted at the 28, he is short, and the Vikings were looking. As the officials were kind of scrambling around for a minute, they finally have spotted the ball. France on to attempt a 45-yarder. This would be a season high. He missed earlier from 39. This one from the right hash this time, which favors the right-footed kicker, and he's nailed it. Well, that's consistent with what he was doing in uh, pregame. He really does seem to have a pretty good leg on it. Young man from just across the river in Vancouver, Washington. Gets the field goal. His sixth field goal of the year and a season-long 45-yarder with 8.40 to play in the second quarter. Excellent form that time. Head down, nice leg extension, drive through the ball. 45-yard kick. That is not an easy kick for really any level and a beautiful kick for him this evening. Just a yard short of his career best at Portland State. He had a 46 yarder a year ago and he puts the Vikings back out on top 24 21 with the first points of the second quarter. Blanchard now with 249 yards passing midway through the second quarter. And the Grizzlies get a chance to answer once again. There is a look at Scott Deans, the backup kicker and punter. 
who is handling the kickoffs now. So France gets a breather somewhere. Inside the five this time for Zickman. And again the wall. Boy, he's got speed as well. Run over the kicker and nearly broke it. Nice job by the kicker of sticking the helmet in, but it's clear out to about the 47-yard line. And that young man is a flyer, Bob. Yeah, you talk about gold stars. Let's give him one. Uh, this is like his third great attempt this evening. Nice wall up front, well coached here, picking up the defenders as they come down. But his speed is what makes this play happen as he picks the sideline and goes real hard. He actually runs over a tackler, 44-yard return. What a weapon that is. Yep, Dean's the senior kicker putting the helmet in there. and The red shirt freshman with a great run back. And, you know, he's in that wide receiver core as well. There's just so many talented guys in front of him, it's tough getting some time. But he gives, again, a short field situation to the Grizz. Wide open near sideline this time to Watkins. Breaks free of the first pursuers, takes it all the way to the Portland State 32, and that's just flat-out missed tackling. Yeah, and, and what we talked about earlier, making people miss. Uh, Jeremy with a great catch. The front line doing an excellent job for Montana, too, keeping the pressure away. Uh, here you go. Make an inside move, make an outside move, pick up a block, and pick up 15 more yards. Watkins, we said, averaged 99 yards a game in receptions, and uh, he's already over that here early in the first half. 63 of those coming on a first quarter touchdown reception. Time again and again, Watkins wide open, takes it inside the 20. Well, other than the one drop ball in the end zone in the first quarter, he has just had a stellar evening. And even with that one considered, he's had a stellar evening. He's the go-to guy so far in the set today for Drew Miller. Monty Button wrapping him up that time. Halftime score from Sacramento and an interesting matchup here. They're putting on points on the board as well. 28-21, that one actually being played in Ogden. And in Flagstaff at the end of three, Eastern Washington over Northern Arizona, 14-10. Eagles, of course, uh, without their quarterback, Fred Salanoa, lost for the rest of the year. Miller looking end zone for Ferris. And incomplete. Good coverage by Floyd for PSU. The Vikings sent uh, quite a few people up the middle that time. Montana's offensive line able to pick up the scheme. And Miller, just enough time to get the ball away. Right down towards that section of the wall. We've got a flag thrown on the play late as well. Here's the call. Holding. Offense. Looks like it's going to be holding and bring it back. Still for down towards uh, what was the right field corner. If you've ever seen that sports blooper, the guy running through the wall during baseball season, that's the section of the wall that he went through right there where that last pass was intended. A flavor pack sign, I believe. You send him a bill? <laughs> that's out towards right center field there. This hold taking the ball back to the 29. Humphrey, nice cut to the hole. He ran away from the intended area and picked up a few. Vikings had shot a couple guys and really done a nice job that time, Bob, of plugging up the intended hole. Reuben Ricketts and Rochelle Aiken teaming up for PSU. And I think a case there of, there's the sign. Honest, that's still not loose from when he hit it. still have a hole in it, I yeah. noticed there. It's still <laughs> loose, yeah. But on a first, there, first down there and long, rather than throw the ball, they ran it. A little game of chess, trying to fool the defense. From the 26, as we hit the seven minute mark now in the second quarter, Ferris the motion man. Looking for Hancock and overthrows a double coverage that time though, as both Tyler Chemis and Alfred Durr were there for Portland State. We've talked about bringing heat all night, but both these quarterbacks for the most part have had time to throw. Yeah, they're real poised in the pocket. They're not panicking even when there's uh, pressure. They're staying in there and making, for the most part, good decisions. And so much for halftime adjustments. The defense has made first quarter adjustments. They've prevented teams from getting into the end zone so far here in the second quarter. They need to get to the nine to keep this drive going. Miller flushed out. He's going to be wrapped up. First time the Vikings have really put some heavy pressure on him. And Chris Kane made the tackle. 
believe that's the first sack this evening. And again, what a big play there because it might have taken him out of field goal opportunity, even though Hepner is trotting on the field. It's going to make it a tougher kick. Here you can see the pressure, and he just does a nice job to keep hold of the ball. Kane with the stop. Hepner coming out to line up what would be a 47-yard field goal that would be his long for the year. Yeah, and without that sack, you're looking at about a 35-yard field goal. He's two for four on field goals this year, but 0 for two beyond 40. It's gonna be short and well to the left. Well, that kick wouldn't have made it from 35, but again, the sack was very big for the Vikings at that point. Yep, they had to try to put some extra leg into it, so Montana comes away. And Portland State celebrating as if they've just won the ball game practically, and we're still six minutes to go in the first half. And the crowd's getting into it a bit now as well. Time for Montana's defense to turn up the tempo for themselves, although they did a nice job in the last I mean, possession. I, I just saw a basketball coach down there. there, there there's, yeah. there's a bat. No wonder we've had such a high-scoring game. There's a basketball coach loose on the sidelines. Don Holtz, Don Holtz hiding back there behind Mick Dennehy. He's telling him to go to the double low post. Jacobowski in for PSU. And he leads the blocking for Dunn. Just short of the 35-yard line that time. Huntsberger in on the stop. A nice call there, draw play. We've seen it a couple times tonight. Reverse pivot, give it to him up inside. Good blocking again. Andy Pita calling him down from behind as well. And a gain of four that time for Dunn. He'll come to the slot left this time. Charles at the bottom of your screen. And Dunn goes back to motion. Grizzlies string this one out nicely. Huntsberger's going to wrap him up for little or no gain that time. And Boomer was also there preventing him from cutting back. And the side judge took a hit on that one as they rolled out of bounds. Huntsberger's an excellent athlete. He uh, just doesn't really nice job at the safety position for the Grizzlies as you mentioned stringing the play out and that's really what you want to do with a player like Dunn who has so much speed it's almost like a little wing T look that time with Dunn taking it back and just fine footwork by the sophomore from Libby the leading tackler for the Grizz this season as Huntsberger runs him out of bounds after a gain of two From the 36, a third and four. Grizz dropping back this time, wide open underneath the tight end. Inside Montana territory, and Tim Hester, the redshirt freshman, will take it all the way to the Montana 42. Well, that's what you want your tight end to do, almost like Mr. Ferris for Montana did earlier. Come in and sit down underneath the zone coverage, and if he's needed, then he's almost a relief valve for the quarterback, and then pick up a first down. So one of the backers just uh, missed the assignment that time on him. Matt Steinau wrapping him up, but a big gain for the Vikings all the way down to the 42-yard line. Well, usually the tight end will be blocking in those schemes, but that time he came off and made an excellent reception. 22-yard gain on the play for Hester as we go inside five minutes and timeout called by Portland State. So... Everybody's used up their timeouts now in the first half as Blanchard comes trotting over to the sideline. He'll talk things over with Tim Walsh and the guys upstairs, and we'll step aside as well. 4.46 to play. Portland State leads it by three. And we welcome you back to Montana football. The Grizzlies trailing the Portland State Vikings here in the second quarter at Civic Stadium in Portland. First and 10 for Portland State. Carrillo, the tight end, is the motion man, and they give to Jacobowski, the fullback carrying the ball. It's only his seventh carry of the year. Well, that looked like a page out of Montana's playbook, or perhaps Bob Cole brought that from Portland State. Again, they bring a man in motion and skip around with a little extra blocking up front. Picks up four or five yards. Nice way to start your drive. Jacobowski started collegiately at Boise State before transferring to PSU from Tualatin, in the Portland suburb. There you see a little over four minutes to go now in the quarter.
Boomer stepping up that time. Dunn finds a seam and takes it down inside the 30 for another first down. Steinau leading the tacklers that time, and the Grizz shot some gaps but didn't find the right one against Chip Dunn. Yeah, he's an awfully good running back. It just You keep talking about it, but you have to repeat yourself because, you know, there wasn't much there, and he picks up six, seven, eight yards and gets a first down where he would have been lucky. Most backs would have been lucky to get one or two. Portland State may actually think about <laughs> trying to run a little bit of clock here to close out the half. Done with it once again. Trips over his own lineman that time after getting a couple as Montana's interference was real nice that time. Just did not allow a spot at all. I think for Portland State with the lead now, they'd love to go into halftime even with three-point lead. And as you mentioned, use the clock, run it a little bit, and maybe even get a field goal or touchdown here to end the, end the half. Tyler Martin helping to stack that one up for Montana. And they stay with the two backs, although they do have three wide receivers out as well. Done on a delay. Only gets a couple again. The Grizz do a nice job of reacting as Klein and Bryant slide out to bring him down. You talk about extra motivation coming into a game. Some of the Portland State uh, followers wanting to be ranked into the top 20 and Coach Walsh saying, hey, we haven't done anything yet. We haven't proved ourselves. So a game, to, you know, a win tonight against a number two ranked team in the nation, that is extra motivation for a program to get on track. And that's one of the reasons the Vikings are playing so well. Blanchard with time, complete to Charles. First down inside the 15. Coleman having to get some help that time from Boomer and Huntsberger to take Charles out of bounds, but this sophomore from Long Beach, California has had a big first half for PSU. Jollymore also over there, but again, no mistakes tonight by Blanchard, making the right decisions, picking the right receiver, keeping the drive alive, first down. Charles, the third leading receiver for the Vikings coming into the game with 17 catches, but he's really been their big guy so far tonight. He has one touchdown reception. Angel in motion on first down. All kinds of time again for Blanchard. Under pressure, throws deep and juggled and incomplete. Well, that's a case of your own teammate. You know, there were two, two Vikings wide open. Hester, the backup tight end, really getting in the way here of Bryant. Exactly. Uh, this is a sure touchdown, but the two uh, teammates actually kind of got in the way of each other. Bryant breaking off the pattern earlier, and then you see the tight end Hester reaching back. That's that's called communication. you got to let your teammate know you're there that time, and Blanchard scrambling and improvising nearly got another touchdown pass out of it. And it's unusual you'd put two players in the pattern in the, really the same area like that. A lot of times you'll put one underneath, one on top within about a five, seven yard vicinity, but really they were almost side by side. Vikings having to scramble here, and uh, Blanchard is going to have to take a delay a game. I thought he was going to signal timeout, but they don't have one left. Yeah, he did signal timeout. I think he was confused, perhaps, yep. if he had So one. it's a delay a game as Antonio Jackson, a redshirt freshman wide receiver, had come in. They didn't get the play to Blanchard that time, and you can see he's a little bit frustrated. But the way these offenses have gone, five yards is a drop in the bucket right now. Just gives the receivers a little more room to run around. Well, it'll be second down now and 15. Jacobowski in along with Dunn. Underneath, throwing touchdown, Bryant with the catch. You know, in this area of the field, a penalty like that really doesn't make that much difference because the play selections are almost the same. Here's a beautiful throw and a beautiful catch. Up the middle, a little post pattern. And the coverage is not there in time as the ball is completed perfectly. Portland State's leading receiver with his fourth touchdown catch of the year. He beat Vince Huntsberger on the play. And you know, Huntsberger was there. He, actually, the coverage was there, just a perfectly thrown ball. Yep, that last couple steps was just enough. France on to attempt the point after. It's no good. Could that be significant down the road? We will have to see as the lead is now nine 
instead of 10 with 2.07 to play in the quarter. Again, watch the coverage here again. Uh, a lot of time, sets up. He just broke late. Yeah, he had to really hustle to get on the coverage, but he closed well. It's always tough. You never know which way they're going to go on the pattern. And that time, Bryant took him to the inside and made the grab. Portland State leads it 30-21, to 2.07 to play in the second quarter. And here you see Floyd saying, thank you for keeping me off the field <laughs> as Bryant makes that grab. Mick Dennehy reminding his team of what they need to do. And, boy, they could use another one of those fine kick returns right here. And if I were Portland State, I might think about a squib kick right here just to prevent that. Well, the only thing that would stop you, of course, is if it's uh, recovered by Montana. Uh, give them pretty good field position also. But yeah, but I'd just bounce it through that first wave around the 25 or 30 and, and make one of those big hosses try to pick it up. It's a lot better than watching Zickman run it out to midfield. That's a good point, Todd. And the way he's been returning, it really wouldn't be a, that bad of an idea. Well, we'll see what Scott Deans has been told to do. And there's your answer. Every once in a while, I get lucky on those calls, and it goes by Molden as well. This could really benefit PSU now. Zygmunt, under some pressure, is going to be dropped at about the six-yard line. Well, we just talked about it. It's not a bad thought, but the loose ball, unable to be handled by Montana, pins him into a deep hole down inside the 10-yard line. Well, Blanchard, we mentioned earlier, got off there. McDenhey trying to encourage his players. Got off to a bit of a slow start at 4 for 10. He's completed 11 of his last 16 passes. He has now thrown for 301 yards in the first half of play and has thrown for two touchdown passes. That against a Montana defense, which generally gives up a lot less than that in passing, 183 yards a game. And Blanchard has 301 in the first half. Miller having to go long field under two minutes now. Juggling, grab by Watkins, cannot get to the sideline, but what a catch right there by Jeremy Watkins. Well, and he appears to be shaken up. You're going to hope that he's okay. That's probably the catch of the evening there, one-handed. Bob, it looked as though he might have stretched a little bit as he tried to reach for the ball. Beautiful catch, though, as he came up with one hand, just enough to slow the ball down, enough to get his both hands on it and make a fine reception. You know, if he wouldn't have done that, it could have been intercepted as well. Alfred Durr on the stop for Portland State. And look again at Jeremy Watkins. Looks like he's going to be all right. He's not limping too bad, so I have a feeling we'll see him back in the lineup. The senior from Big Sky High School is been key to Grizz's success so far tonight. Nine catches, 146 yards, and a touchdown. Second and short here for Montana. Miller has the corner, and he's going to throw instead. Sends Hancock down the sideline and makes the grab out over the 45-yard line. Bishop on the coverage. There's a little flash of the potential of this young man. Yeah, Miller, again, ducking under the pressure. There was a lot of pressure, as there has been really all night. He comes up, steps up inside, flushes, and a watch this says, go down deep, go down deep, throws it over the top. <laughs> that is an excellent job for the quarterback. Great catch as well. First down. I really thought there he might go ahead and tuck it under and take the corner. He had a lot of room, but a good touch pass and a 30-yard gain on the play. The catch for Hancock, his first of the night. Again, time steps up and had that one deflected away. The lineman getting in the way in the nick of time. Rochelle Aiken, the left end. Aiken did a nice job. He wasn't able to get into the backfield, but he just kind of camped on the line of scrimmage, waited for Drew to pull the trigger, and what he did, he jumped up and knocked the ball down right there with the right hand. Kind of screened himself away with the use of the lineman and then popped up at the last minute. They teach your guys to read the quarterback's eyes, and he did it that time. Miller now 16 to 25. That's 64% completion rate. He's passed for 244 in a score. Looking deep middle. Nice grab there. Atu Molden has a block from Ferris. All tripped up just short of the 30-yard line. Nice pursuit for the Vikings that time. You need to credit Montana's offensive line on this play. 
Drew had all day back there and even could have waited a little bit longer. Ud the receiver comes underneath and goes back across the grain and picks up about 10 extra yards. Tanner Cole, the redshirt freshman, just got a hand on him or else he might have been able to spring it more. From the 30-yard line, Miller flushed out again and he'll be brought down. Pressure provided up front that time by Brad Ransom along with Ryan Masiog. Well, you can see the clock in the lower left part of your screen there. And again, Montana would love nothing better than to get a score and go into halftime with a touchdown to get some confidence to rebuild for the second half. Down the middle, and Hancock had looked the other way. And again, every once in a while, with the type of patterns the Grizz run, it's a read between quarterback and receiver, and Hancock was looking a different direction. Well, he, as we mentioned earlier, he was injured last week and maybe just uh, getting the cobwebs out here early as far as what page he's on with the play call. But he would have been open if he'd have broke it off into the middle a little bit sooner. So it brings up a third down for the Grizz. So first of all, they've got to pick up the down. That also would stop the clock, so they don't need to worry about going sideline on this play. Doing it right now with Watkins on the sideline, shaken up earlier in this drive. Flushed out again, now looking. It looks as though somebody got a piece of his arm as he stepped up that time, and it'll fall short. Was trying to find Hancock back along the sideline. It did look like the ball was tipped. Of course, unable to make a reception after that ball is tipped as it comes off his fingers. Well, it looked as though he got it away cleanly that time, and Hepner, who missed earlier, will step up this time and attempt officially a 46-yard kick. Smith, the holder. Hepner has the leg. He definitely can do this. And that one looks as though it's going to come up short again and does. So he's 0 for 2. Well, he's mad at himself. He knows he's good for that kick, and I've seen him make it many times. Just didn't get the drive on the leg that you need to follow through. But he'll have other days and other kicks, and he'll make those as often as not. Look there, you watch the replays. He didn't quite get the leg lock that he wanted, that full lock of the leg for a kicker that time. And the other thing to keep in mind is that he doesn't kick on turf every week either. That's a bit of an adjustment for a kicker as well. It's a different feel and a different plant. And Portland State is held. We'll see whether the Vikings do anything towards going for broke. Mick Dennehy getting set to take his team into the locker room and trailing at halftime. Blanchard will take the knee, and that'll do it for a wild first half of play, although tempo slowed down a little bit. And Montana does not score any points in the second quarter of play. Blanchard with over 300 yards passing in the first half. And Mick Dennehy's team trails going into the locker room at halftime. Well, a bit of a surprise here. And, uh, of course, the coaches there will gather and visit about a little bit. But uh, they'll have to regroup and come out. But actually, both teams doing very well offensively. But Portland State... Uh, really taking advantage of uh, their offense here in the first half. There's still a long, long way to go in this one. Uh, stay tuned. We'll get you caught up on the latest in news and also tell you about some of the goings on on the Montana campus. It's halftime. Portland State 30, Montana 21.